Hello everyone, today I will talk to you about the air defense capabilities of the United States, the largest army in the world. America has an air defense organization unlike any other country. The bulk of the U.S. military, about two-thirds of it, is not located in the U.S. mainland. Most of the U.S. military is stationed around the world. In other words, there are very critical bases outside the U.S. mainland that need to be protected like the Diego Garcia base on the Indian Ocean. Moreover, America has been constantly threatened by ballistic missiles since the Cold War years. With the collapse of the Soviet Union, Russia and Iran continue this threat. China has been trying to destroy American supremacy in the Pacific for years. And North Korea is threatening American soil with a nuclear attack. That's why America's air defense system has a unique and special structure. Before we start, if you want videos about air defense capabilities of other countries, do not forget to specify in the comments. You will be really surprised to hear about America's low, medium, and high altitude defense systems. America really cares about air defense. But they handle air defense in the air, not on the ground. There is a truth in the American Army. They do not send ground troops to an area where they cannot gain air superiority unless they have to. That's why America's basic air defense capability is the American Air Force and the American Navy. The world's largest army is the American Army, and the second largest army in the world is the American Navy. The American Navy has a special structure. When we talk about American warplanes, we can't just talk about the American Air Force. We should also mention the U.S. Navy. In short, the air defense of the American ground troops is partially provided by warplanes. While we are describing the American air defense capability, we will start from the ground and go 250 kilometers up, about 820,000 feet. America has used many air defense systems since the Cold War years, but it currently uses the CRAM system to protect non-mainland regions. Almost all navies in the world are actively using the CRAM system. Unlike other countries, America uses it deployed on the truck chassis. America has used many air defense systems since the Cold War years. However, it currently uses the CRAM system to protect regions outside the mainland. Almost all navies in the world actively use the CRAM system. Unlike other countries, America uses it by deploying it on the truck chassis. This system includes the M61 Vulcan we know. The M61 Vulcan has six barrels and can fire 20 mm rounds. CRAM can destroy aircraft and helicopters, as well as cruise missiles, rockets, UAVs, and mortar shells. The highly effective CRAM system is not America's ultimate low-altitude air defense system. This system, which the U.S. calls Thor, can destroy targets flying at low altitudes with laser beams and electromagnetic weapons. There are two main parts in this system. Electromagnetic gun and laser gun. The purpose of the electromagnetic weapon is to destroy targets such as UAVs, smart cruise missiles, and drones by sending electromagnetic signals. Apart from this, there is a laser system to stop unguided bullets such as mortar shells and artillery rockets. This laser can emit 1 to 10 kilowatts of energy. America developed this system together with Israel. In 2030, within the development of this system, it is planned to form the entire low-altitude air defense of the United States. Barrel air defense systems such as CRAM will no longer be used. The American Army's most basic and low-altitude air defense missile is, as you can imagine, the Stinger. You can also see the FIM-92 Stinger missile launcher integrated into armored vehicles in the U.S. Army. Apart from that, the American Army has been using the Avenger system since the 1980s. This system has been modernized many times. In its current form, Avengers can use laser-guided missiles called Starstreaks. Meanwhile, the American Army plans to withdraw the Avenger system in its inventory from service and plans to replace it with electromagnetic-assisted laser weapons. America purchased two Iron Dome low-altitude air defense systems from Israel for urgent needs. 
In the agreement made with Raytheon, America will be able to develop a new generation low-altitude air defense system over the Iron Dome. Before we finish the low-altitude air defense system, let's talk about the low-altitude air defense system of the American Navy. The equivalent of CRAM in the U.S. Army is the Phalanx in the U.S. Navy. Apart from this, RAM missiles are also used. As for the mid-altitude air defense system, there is a huge gap here. America currently does not officially have a medium-altitude air defense system. MIM-23 Hawk was used as medium-altitude air defense before. They even used the modernized version of the Hawk. America, which sells these missiles to the whole world, does not currently use this system. Although there are some studies for mid-altitude air defense, nothing definite is yet clear. MIM-104 Patriotot is heavily involved in the U.S. medium-altitude air defense. Modernized Pitirots are used as both mid-altitude and high-altitude air defense. It has more than 400 patriotic launchers, and these launchers can fire different types of missiles. Their range varies between 22 kilometers and 160 kilometers. It has a range of 72,000 feet to 525,000 feet. If it comes to the high-altitude air defense system, we come across THAAD here. THAAD is an anti-ballistic missile defense system developed by the United States to protect the mainland. The characteristics of this missile are not clearly specified, but according to many sources, it has a range of 300 kilometers. The purpose of THAAD is to destroy the intercontinental ballistic missile without approaching the mainland. THAAD and its U.S. Navy County RPR, the Smetricup, do not use an ordinary warhead. Detecting and destroying enemy warheads when these warheads reach high altitude. After explaining the high altitude air defense, this work does not end here. If you want to attack the American mainland, you must first pass the largest air force fleet in the world. The American Air Force is a huge army, both in terms of quality and quantity. You have to overcome warplanes such as F-15, F-16, F-22, and F-35. And I wouldn't recommend going within range of a fighter like the A-10 Thunderbolt II. America has thousands of fighter jets and the world's best pilot training program. So there is a wall in front of you that is difficult to overcome. But to get over this wall, you have to get over another wall. American Navy The United States is among the two largest oceans in the world. Pacific and Atlantic. In other words, you have to pass the biggest navy in the world before you encounter the American Air Force. It has dozens of helicopters and aircraft carriers, including the USS Gerald R. Ford. And these ships contain hundreds of warplanes and helicopters. Apart from that, you have to overcome the world's largest destroyer fleet. Moreover, these ships have the world's most advanced integrated defense networks. Ships with this advanced radar system can simultaneously detect 800 targets and lock missiles to fire 200 of them. America's air defense capability is not limited to this. America does not build air defense from the mainland. It does it from the border of enemy territory. The logic of America's anti-ballistic missile defense is not to meet the missile, but to detect when the missile is launched. That's why there are American radars all over the world. Hundreds of ships in the oceans and seas are reconnaissance every day against the possibility of airstrikes for America. America has many different projects developed for the air defense system. I will talk about them when the time comes. Don't forget to like the video if you found it useful and subscribe to the channel to be notified of such videos.